Alright folks, welcome back to the Motorcycle Garage. Uh, in this episode we're going to attempt to try and make a pie cut exhaust. It's something I've been thinking about for a while. I've been acquiring tools in the background to try and help me make it. Um, so, we've got the bike rolled out outside. I'm going to have a little look at one of the existing exhausts to try and maybe take some measurements off it. And then I'm going to just walk you through step by step how I plan on doing this. Fingers crossed it works. Um, unfortunately, I've on the side I've been trying to get the bike up and running just to try and sample the exhaust uh, as it stands so we can hear the other one but uh, once it's finished but it's it's proven to be a little bit of a, a tricky customer with probably more than just the simple uh, rigging up of components uh, I'll explain in a little bit more detail what I mean about that but stay tuned, should be a good video The original exhaust that came with the bike was also kind of homemade um, the guy seemed to have, I don't know who who want this, but they've they, they started with a similar style to what I want to do, but I'll sketch that out in a bit. Uh, but they've got this big, weird, janky ass back box collector thing that then would, I guess, assume go to some kind of pipe. Why there's a mount there, I really don't know, especially considering that mount looks as though it would connect to the swinging arm. Interesting. Um, but. He's obviously not got pie cuts, it's just radius bends. Um, looks alright, but I think in reality I want to use these builds as, a, as an example of how to teach myself things. So, um, yeah, my hair is truly awful at the moment, but less of that. The, um, I want to try and use these builds as a, as, a, as, a, as a theme for. Christ, it's really difficult to speak today. What's going on? Live a two-day hangover. I want to try and use these builds as a means to teach myself. And I bought a TIG welder last year um, because I want to try and learn how to use that. I bought a new bandsaw recently, metal cutting bandsaw, so I can get nice accurate cuts. So every time I've seen a pie cut exhaust, I always thought I like the look of that. I want to force myself to learn how to do that. So that's the whole point in this. So the XS750 here. It's going to be 850, 750, I don't really know what it is anymore. Um, it's going to have a, a customised exhaust. So the exhaust itself, I'm thinking to go 3 into 3, kind of like this is, but instead of coming off to the side, assuming I've got clearance, and that's why I've got it outside today, assuming I've got clearance, I want to come straight down and go more underneath the bike. Um, so right now it's still pissing oil everywhere, that's one of the reasons it's not started despite me changing a few sub gaskets and everything else but um, let's go draw it on the whiteboard and I'll show you what I'm thinking Ok, if we look at the exhaust, the original exhaust that's on the bike excuse this really poorly drawn sketch but it's got um, three, it's got three into three into a collector that I'm assuming then this has a, it would have a bat box or something like that and then the bike, the engine sits here and it all goes underneath the bike. One thing to note is that they kind of kick off to the side. Um, so having a look at the bike, I'm not entirely sure I want that. I would quite like to mess around a little bit with this exhaust design. Purely because um, I've done a bit of reading, look into it, and you hear all these people talking about exhaust back pressure and oh you've got to have back pressure, you've got to have this and you've got to have that. And, to be honest, you can't really get a clear answer when it comes to motorbike exhaust as to whether anyone actually considers that in reality when they're designing a custom system. Um, so a lot, a lot of the reading I've done looks at what happens when you've got exhausts that go into a collector, say, no, this is a point where your exhaust gases then have something to reverberate against and, and go back the way and the, the pulses go back up and as the engine runs there's a there's a valve overlap which means that both valves are simultaneously open um, pressure differential within the exhaust and the, the cylinder itself causes exhaust gases to evacuate so if you don't get that right then you leave yourself without a full enough volume within your combustion chamber to then get the most efficient burning and all the fuel in for the next time but you can't, I want to do something a little bit different with my exhaust um, so, and because I can't find anyone or any 
I've, I've looked quite hard. I've looked to see if there was any length of pipes. How long does a pipe need to be? What's the diameter it needs to be? How far does it need to be from a collector before you start to have issues with reverberance and resonance, back pressures and everything else? Um, but I want to do things a little bit different because it's me and why would I try and make things simplistic? So I really like the sound of my Subaru and the reason my Subaru sounds the way it does is because you've got unequal length I'm not even actually I'm not gonna draw that that I'm just gonna it's got unequal length headers Google it but it pretty much means some of the sound some of the exhaust gases the, uh, travel further than others to meet a point on the turbo and this additional distance that the, the sound travels uh, through the medium of the exhaust pulses and everything else causes that unusual rumble and the warble that you get. And I really like it. I think it's cool. It's really characteristic of my car. That's why I've got a big bin, to, <laughs> a bin uh, for an exhaust. It's absolutely massive and it's really antisocial, but it's good fun. What I liked about my Harley was I had two discrete pipes um, and they were shaped like that and that. And they were both slightly different lengths, but each cylinder had its own individual pipe no collector, no nothing else. I don't like... I want to try something a little different with my bike where I've got um, three into three uh, so I've got a 90 degree bend coming out if you look at this from the side and another bend and it goes underneath the bike same same but in reality that would be these would all be in the same length so if you looked at the bike from the front and you looked at the engine and that was your three that's the bottom half of your engine. Each one would just go straight down. And they would terminate at the back at the same length and then they would all go back towards underneath the bike so that it would look like this. But what I want to try and model is if I've got a 3 into 3 system can I stagger the lengths of those ever so slightly? So obviously if you make one exhaust really really short and one absolutely massive, there, you are going to see a difference in uh, engine performance, especially with the length of time that that, um, that gas is taken to exit. So if the one with the really short exhaust takes no time at all, that may actually be beneficial. If the one takes much longer, uh, then that may you may have an imbalance between your cylinders in terms of each individual cylinder's performance. So I don't want to go as far as saying, let's have one that stops and terminates just below the, the, the outlet of the exhaust and then one that terminates just before the, the swing arm. I don't want that. I kind of just want to see whether I can get slight differences in length, maybe as much as like 30 centimeters between the, the middle one and the back one with one and half way in between. I don't know if that will drastically change the note, but that's something I really want to try. So this exhaust is probably going to be pretty straightforward. If we look at what I think it will look like, what I have to build, it will just be three pipes the first one will look like that the second one will look like that and the third one will look obviously a little bit longer and I might either put slash cuts in these so you see them underneath the bike and they look a little bit longer, but that's realistically what I'm going to go for. Um, I'm thinking, so I've got some 304 stainless steel that I'm going to cut out. Um, I, I've got a trusty new band saw and I'll, and I'll go over that as well, which what it looks like. But I'm going to make this out of pie cuts. Um, and then pie cuts are when you can take a straight bit of pipe and cut it, cut it at an angle and then you can weld them together, don't know if you can take them and then cut them at an angle um, so you can put sections of pipe together to create a radius and I think you can have ones that have like a, a four and a half degree angle either side um, so four and a half degrees add up to give you nine degrees if you've got nine degrees Let's bring this a little bit closer. Four and a half add up to give you nine degrees. That means one segment gives you a transition of nine degrees. 
So if you want to do a 90 degree bend, then you need 10 of these pies, essentially, to then give you a nice smooth bend radius uh, of 90 degrees. That's is in its most simplistic form. Depending on how long the pie is at the top versus the bottom, that impacts how tight the radius, the bend radius is going to be. So I've got a bit of digging to do just to figure out what kind of bend radius I think I'm fairly comfortable with. Because this is my first attempt doing anything with pie cut or welding stainless or anything, I'm going to try and limit the amount of changes. Um, I did have another idea for my exhaust, whereas if, if you looked at it dead on from the front, um, it would be one down like that, so if that's your first cylinder and that's your middle one and that's your other one, the second one would go down like that, so that goes down like that, and that goes down like that, but I don't know, um, looking underneath the bike, there's a, your oil sump's here, I think regardless of where I put my exhaust, um, I'll probably make it my life a little bit more difficult for the exhaust uh, for, for changing the oil um, which is is what it is, it's an impracticality that I've probably put on myself but um, current exhaust has um, I believe it's the same stainless that I'm going to be using unfortunately with Covid I there's a one last final bit that I need um, to get, help get me on my way in terms of starting the exhaust so if you see the close up here of the bike you can see that the the bike needs um, flange connections at the end to meet up nicely with the face of the cylinder head. Um, and speaking to some helpful people online, I've got a few ideas to try and how to make them. One of them is to make little five millimeter thick stainless steel, get that laser cut into the profile I need, and then weld that onto the end, and that could be my starter flange. Or get a big bit of 49 millimeter stainless uh, and bore a 38.2 millimeter hole. Uh, the stainless I'm using is 38.1, so if I get something that's just marginally bigger, I'll be able to put it on top, weld it in place, and then I've got my starter flange and I've got a face for my my uh, clamps to push against, and then hold my exhaust in tight. Unfortunately, I've not been able to. I, I got some ridiculous quotes. Um, Aberdeen suffers from oil and gas tax, so if you ask for any small engineering job. They just bend you down and uh, take advantage of trying to pay the ridiculous fees that they, that they're so used to. So I think I got charged, I quoted somewhere like £150 for 10 bits of stainless steel that I needed to cut. Um, so I've parked that in the back burner till I can get access to a lathe, uh, which I will get uh, afterwards. But I'm going to cut the existing ends of the... Um, the janky exhaust that's currently fitted and I'll reuse those starter flanges um, just as a means to start my exhaust um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut them off at a later date and, and re-weld other ones but in the meantime so I can start this exhaust I'm just going to cut them flush um, they'll all be the same length so then I can start my pie cuts um, at a certain distance and then get my radius and everything else and start cutting that way so um, it's a bit nerve wracking but it is an old exhaust, I don't plan on using it. I might be able to salvage some of the bends for another build because um, I do quite like the radius that are in there. It's just, uh, to be honest, I'm probably going to be quite messy here. I've never done this in my life, I've never welded with stainless, I've never done anything else. So, But I want to try and give everyone a, a representative example of a noob trying something like this uh, with the mistakes that I'll make and everything else. So, um, I believe the best way to build this exhaust is go and cut all my my um, cut the metal down to size first, um, then get my high sections cut. I make that I'll need if it's ten four and a half degrees to get a ninety degree transition, and I've got two per exhaust section. Then that's what uh, sixty. Quite a lot of pie cuts I need to go and make. Um, so once I nail down what my bend radius is going to be, I'll keep that fixed. Um, I don't really see the need in changing it. If you wanted to see a change in bend radius, I guess it would look a little bit like like a snake. Like if you were going like there and then you decided to change the bend radius, it would get that's a tighter bend radius than say 
than that is. So the way you change that is here would be much shorter, if that makes sense, than there. The bend radius here is much shorter. Um, this bit here, here. So I think once I agree on a, a distance that I need to, I'll just keep that set. And then I'll be able to mark it in my pipe and turn it and, and then have it in the same distance each time. So that's going to be an interesting one as well. Uh, I think I might just try and get my pies cut today. Uh, it's a bit of a miserable day outside. My garage is quite full. Um, I do need to try and tackle that as well. So, unfortunately, the bike doesn't want to start. Um, I was quite optimistic. I hoped that it would start, but um, sorry, it's raining. I might have to go and take some stuff in, but I, I hope that it would start. But for whatever reason, um, I'm not getting ignition through all of my coils. Uh, so the way that I've tried to partially rig up my electric system with the original ignition box um, has not worked. So I've got one more solution, but upon changing the gasket and reassembling the bike and putting oil in it, um, there's just bits and pieces that are there's more oil pissing out from bolts that have been missed and to be honest I should be doing all these checks but part of me was like well I was told this bike was a, a runner so I was kind of optimistic in that I wasn't going to have to take the bike out and give it once over but whatever I'm sure it's fine um, but I just there's bits missing there's leaks so I'm, I'm, I'm I want to go and check the valve clearances it feels unusually weird and hard to kick over my battery is working hell of a hard I think to turn the engine over so I'd like to check my, my valve clearances um, I'd like to also check all these little pissy bits that keep leaking oil and everything else so um, and also I think I'm gonna just abandon trying to use that existing loom and just go straight ahead with my Neutronics ignition check the coils I switch the coils around so all coils appear to be working but there seems to be something happening between getting a signal sent to the coil and if I'm being brutally honest the coil doesn't look as though it's generating that big a spark so I don't know whether it's to do with my lack of earth somewhere on the bike or just generally it's not looking that good so um, the other thing I need to look at is getting my battery box mounted properly um, it seems to have bowed out the way slightly when I built it, so it's quite tight fitting between the chassis rails. I, I want to try and make sure that that fits a little bit nicer, whether I can bend it inwards a little bit uh, and, and, and just take away the worst of the bowing out. That would be a good idea, but I've got, plenty, I've got a week off of work, so plenty to keep me busy. I'm going to try my best to try and get as much of this exhaust on as possible, but first I'm going to try and cut some of this stainless down because right now it's a six meter length in my garage and I, and I, I can't use that. <laughs> so I'm going to cut it down into one meter sections from there. Nothing on this bike is going to be longer than a meter. So it makes it a lot, a lot more manageable for me if I've got one meter sections uh, just to try and be able to do all my pie cuts. So um, let's get on with it and see how we see how we get, see how stuff, stuff and that. Okay, so this steel is 38.1 millimeter 304 stainless. I accidentally ordered um, two, millimeter, two millimeter thick instead of 1.6, um, but it was too late to change. Uh, ideally, I would have wanted a thinner wall tubing, but there you go. So this, I think, I don't know. It'll be easier to weld because it's slightly thicker, but I did want it thinner. But anyway, um, I'm going to be using my. Femi 105 XL metal cutting bandsaw that I have recently acquired um, from Stakesies online, a uh, British company. They they import all these these nice tools. So um, this this metal cutting bandsaw was bought. A I do a lot of furniture building, and being able to cut accurate miters would would help with that. Uh, but also for cutting a pie cut exhaust, this thing will be ideal. Um, you can cut up to a 45 degree mitre, we obviously want to go 4.5 degrees so that's absolutely grand. It's well built, I think it was around about £320, quite a lot of money, a bit of an investment but if, if this works out well then I'll use it a lot for the future, for future exhausts uh, but I'll, I'll also use it around the house anyway for um, just generally making furniture and whatnot. So. 
Hey folks, so before we make a start on the uh, exhaust, I've changed the blade on the bandsaw. The original blade that came with it was mounted the wrong way. Um, stupidly, well, stupidly maybe, I shouldn't feel I should have to check whether a machine straight out of the factory should have the bandsaw mounted the right way. But, I, I did a couple of passes with it initially and it was complete dog shit. So, I had a look online at some of the other videos and to, what made sense to me was the blades were pointing the, the other way so I swapped it around and lo and behold it started cutting really well but the, the amount of teeth that you have can impact how well it actually cuts so I've purchased, knowing that I'm going to be doing quite a lot of pie cuts I've purchased a new blade so it should hopefully cut through the um, stainless steel with these uh, one of the things I think you're meant to do with these multi-metal bandsaw blades is to uh, you're meant to condition them I think or like at least do a certain number of cuts with different types of metals so they they don't dull completely when you start so I'm just gonna have a, cu a quick look as to see if there's anything I can do to help improve the longevity of the blade uh, by performing those different cuts um, once that's done I'm gonna figure out the center line radius the center line radius we spoke about um, determines how wide the pie cut section actually is because that will determine whether it's a really tight curve or not not such a tight curve so um, <laughs> embarrassingly or not I've not got a protractor so I've just tried to take a bit of welding rod uh, and bent it to match the shape of uh, the current exhaust that's on there because I quite like that, that profile <clears throat> so that is currently what I'm using as my offset um, I've taken that measurement and then I will uh, put it onto a bit of paper and try and figure out what the closest uh, center line radius, what that actually equals in terms of a circle size. Um, uh, what I can do then is plug that into a pie cut calculator. The link is in the description below for the one that I borrowed. Thanks very much, here we are, that's very helpful. Uh, and what this does is I'm planning on maintaining the same radius all the way throughout. So once I've got that set, I'll cut a few bits, make sure I'm happy with it. Uh, if that's if that's good, then I'll proceed and just cut the rest of the, the pie cuts. I think yesterday I mentioned I need 40, 60, no, 10 degrees for a 90 degree radius. Uh, so yeah, I need close to 60, 60 cuts because we've got 90 degrees at the top, 90 degrees at the bottom to go underneath the bike. So quite a lot of cuts to make. Um, I've been watching a video by the Fabrication series. Again, a very helpful one. I've linked that in the description. Um, as to how easily to set up your bandsaw with a, a stop, a stop here um, for getting your fixed length. This actually just goes in the end, so I get fixed length to cut every single time. All I need to do is mark up my tubing uh, to ensure that it's when I make my cut and when I rotate it, it's 90, it's 180 degrees apart from each other, so that we get a perfectly aligned pie cut. So. I'm going to stop dropping everything because this is falling apart and I'll sh set up and show you exactly what I plan to do to make sure I get consistent pie cuts. So I got all my metal stock cut up uh, yesterday. This came in a big 4 metre length. So I've cut up into 1 metre sections. Um, uh, it's quite shiny but apparently this will still weld okay. It's, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but. I'm going to try and cut a few of these. Um, so what you have to do is mark, uh, mark the center point on both sides, so that you then have a reference point you can always turn the pipe to. So, um, seeing this video, so I've marked, I've taken where the center line is um, from. Uh, just by putting this on the workbench, I've taken the center line and then marked that all the way along uh, at either end mark that on with a straight edge so now I have a reference point on either side of my pipe I then need to make the relevant reference point on my um, bandsaw the bandsaw I just put a bit of tape on um, with a with a line on it uh, that's the same height so then I'm always getting each time I'm doing that it's wherever I turn the pipe to I've always got that reference point um, once that's done um, I, I mark I've moved my um, stopper 12 and a half millimeters out from the side of the blade um, so then I, every time I cut and I turn my pipe I can just use the same point and get the same 
the same length every time so then that's giving me my repeatable pie cuts um, like I said I'm not entirely sure whether 12 and a half millimeters is too short um, I've tried to take this off another bike that's in situ the reason that's in situ at the moment is um, I wanted to try and get the bike running but due to it being piss hold full of uh, oil leaks that's not happening right now so um, I can maybe take that bike off, I, I do need to swing the bike in so that I, I'm going to try and cut all my pies and then I'm realistically going to have to try and find a way to get the, the bike earth through the bike uh, so then I can uh, tack it all in place while it's on the bike um, I really 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 would love a ramp at this point <sighs> no beer today for now really love a, bike, uh, a ramp to help me bring the bike up to the right level but all I've got is this pissy little uh, bike ramp little um, wind up bike thing so I might be able to bring it slightly higher up um, but yeah it's not ideal so especially for sighting the bike and looking to make sure the exhaust really straight and um, that's going to be a bit of a challenge and um, like I said first time trying this unsure how it's going to turn out um, so let's get this set up um, and get some pie cuts made and see I'm just going to quickly tack weld them together on the bench at the radius like just going to tack them together to hold them up to the bike and see what we think uh, but we'll get them cut first Okay, we've cut our first few pie cuts. Um, they are the very first two. I've tried well together. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go cover that shortly, but they weren't as accurate as they could be. Meaning, the bit that I put on my machine, the inaccuracies with the Sharpie meant you had a, a mil and a half either way if you weren't on, on top of it. So when you start to try and line them up, like so, where you should have a, a red band, I don't know if you can actually see that. Um, they weren't lining up properly, which means the angles probably weren't as steep as they should be. They were a little bit cocked off slightly, so you could turn them manually and try and, and try and align so the fattest bit was was in line with the sharpie. Well, was in line with the other middle points, but um, I figured I might as well get it right. So I've, I've adjusted this uh, just to be having a. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You, I've adjusted this to have a a pen pen line, much finer pen line. Um, so I'm going to cut another five um, just to just to test my theory of the center line radius, and then I'll tack them together on the bench just because I'm not quite at the position of cutting everything off on the bike so once I can get these 10 tacked together I'll, tack, um, I'll take them over to the bike see I'm pretty happy we'll take the camera over as well see I'm pretty happy with the centerline radius um, and then I'll be, in a, I'll be in a position I think to just go and keep cutting as many as I can um, I don't know how many I'll get I need 60 I believe in total so uh, I'll just be cutting away uh, something that You'll see, maybe uh, not. It's not obvious in here because I've tidied them up, but have to take them over to the grinder slightly and just take the burr edge off. Uh, it'd be nice to have like a linisher that you can just get at it, but I've not got that, so I've just taken it onto the, my new grinder that I got and just kissed the edge a little bit just so it makes it nice. So um, we'll go and cut the rest, and then we shall tack some of them together and hold it next to the exhaust. So we've got 10 bits, 10 bits should equal 90 degrees because 4.5 degrees each side equals a 9 degree transition angle, 9 degrees times 10 equals 90 degrees. Even I can figure that math out. I'm going to have a stab 
at welding these together just on my bench this is all it's gonna be a slow process anyway you see a lot of guys go straight to their bike and, and have at it and that's brilliant but that's not me I'm not smart enough to do that yet um, so <laughs> slash this is weird anyway I'm gonna I do, even though I've checked them as they've come off you still see a bit of a difference between the top lines and the bottom lines um, which probably suggests to me that my um, lines that I've drawn on aren't as true as we would like them to be uh, directly in the middle or whether there was a bit of movement you saw how much of a pain in the ass it was <laughs> to try and draw that line um, however a lot of them are, are butting up quite nicely so I'm going to just tinker about with the TIG um, and then try and tack these together um, I think well I know speaking from a lot of people you have to back purge when you come to weld the full system uh, meaning that you have to close the, each of the ends and around the exhaust and fill it with an inert gas also uh, something to do with magic that <laughs> that happens when you uh, you take without it because it's a shitty weld um, there is a reason for it um, I can't remember right now but I've got back purge equipment coming should arrive tomorrow but for me tagging yeah, sorry for me tacking these things together right now that should be okay all I really want to do is tack these 10 bits together be happy they're all in line um, once we're happy they're all in line I can take that over to the bike have a little look there all going well with that then that's when we'll start looking at um, where to go next okay so I tried to match this angle which I think for the most part I have managed to do um, which in turn is probably going to be the same as that angle because I'm assuming this guy's just bought these as um, pre-bent radii alright so excuse my <laughs> sex offender glasses again um, these are the bits we need they're probably not cut off as square as I would like just for the fact that it was a bit of a ball ink getting in there with the grinder so I shall try and square these off in my um, trusty new bandsaw these we're going to reuse at the moment um, like everything else on this build one of the things I wanted to look at is drawing up a design for these as well um, they're not incredibly difficult to do um, it's very basic, pretty basic to draw up in CAD so I'd quite like to try and get some cooler ones made um, for this build so that's that's going to be one of the things I'll do but not right now I'm just going to try and get this on the bike connected to the bike and then we can look and start the, the um, flapping up the exhaust and seeing how that looks Alright, so I have been wrestling with trying to straighten this a little bit. There's an, there's an issue with the way my um, bandsaw works. You can see in the little video, it's very difficult to try and get this square. So I've tried to... It's, it's not like you're gripping a nice bit over a longer area so you can get a really nice square cut. That how short this is relies on you pinching this bit and it's quite prone to movement there's a 4mm difference between this bit and this bit so trying to get it and, and keep it flat has been quite difficult uh, so I tried to do a cut and it ended up looking still quite shit so what I've decided to do instead was um, cut a couple of bits, cut, cut a slither uh, out of the the wider, sorry, the, the stainless pipe I'm going to be using and then I've cut a slot down the middle um, and then I've sleeved that over and I, I've cut two bits so I know these are parallel so now you can see how much I need to cut off I don't know whether I'll be able to get this on my angle grinder I think what I might just do is get the old handsaw out or um, sorry, not angle grinder I won't be able to cut it on my bandsaw because I'll still suffer the same issue so I'm just going to get the handsaw out and try and flatten this as much as possible cut it nice and straight and then I'll be able to have a nice solid starting point from where my, I want my exhaust to go 
Um, it's just with the way that the exhaust has been cut with the angle grinder. Um, I don't think I'll get it with... I might get it with the Dremel, I don't know. I, I'm going to persevere. I think I've got some bandsaw blades, uh, manual bandsaw blades, somewhere in this garage. So. Um, one of the best things about almost spending £400 on a bandsaw so it can cut straight is still having to resort to an ordinary shitty bandsaw because your bandsaw doesn't work properly. Bandsawception! <sighs> Christ. Right. So that's neatened up quite nicely. Um, doesn't give me a huge amount of room from the front of the bike, uh, but. We'll just have to go with it. We need it. We need it to be straight. So um, I'll probably just use this little thing uh, for the rest, and I'll get them all aligned. And then, in fact, I'm going to get bugger these ones. Come back to that. Let's get this on the bike and start having some fun, making some cool stuff rather than dicking around with flanges. Let's roll the bike in. So we got the bike in. Um, we need to fit this and then this on nicely. Um, it really doesn't give me much room at all. In an ideal world, I'm just going to tack this on. Uh, so um, we'll get it on the bike. I'll show you what I mean. In an ideal world, I would like this to probably be twice the length. What it means in reality is I'm probably going to have to put a short, a short section of straight on so I can actually clear uh, this loop. I need to clear this loop here, so I need to come out far enough. And so in an ideal world, if I was to able to get my flanges, my um, flanges connections made, I'd be able to come out here and then go down. Uh, but we'll get it fitted up, see what it looks like. So we've got quite a short area. And we've got our pie cut, already made 90 degrees. So you can see that that fills that file was this. That's hitting off there. Let's take a better shot for you. Also, that pine is tightened up, and and on the bottom here, I know that. But um, so what I need to do is bring that out to about there. So I need a section. section about that length to well done and then I've got but to be honest when you look at this a lot of this is done on by eye so if I look at the way that this bottom one is pointing I need to realistically be the other way because that's gonna point me down into there it's very hard to see in the camera uh, unless I can but I don't want to do that. I want to come out of here as straight as possible. I don't want to kick up the way to help rescue that. I want to come out of there as straight as possible. So, these may need a little bit of work. That's fine. These are, these are tacked together anyway, purely for this purpose. Um, so I may not necessarily need a full 90 degrees. I maybe need less than 90 degrees. And how many have I got there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I've got 10 there. <laughs> At a 9 degree transition angle because these are four and a half degrees each side that gives me a 90 degree turn so I don't, maybe don't actually need that, maybe I only need 70 degrees or, or it's whatever as close I can get with my 9 degree transition 72 or whatever uh, last video I struggled with trigonometry I'm going to struggle with uh, multiplication this time So, um, but that's fine I, I might go and where this is parted anyway like that. If I just use my unbelievable bear strength, I've now managed to take that away, which is great. So I'm going to add a little bit anyway. I've measured how much I need to add in terms of a straight, um, and then we'll come back, cut it on the bandsaw, TIG weld it in place, um, to try and make it as straight as possible, and then we'll, we'll offer it up to the bike again and see what that looks like.
another fine Scottish tasty beer. Check out Drygate, they're keeping me drunk this uh, drunk during this quarantine. So I've taken this off, cleaned it up. Um, I'm just gonna there's actually a little bit, a little edge I need to take off, um, and then I'll take these together. Then we'll chuck it back in the bike, see what it looks like, and then from there we can decide whether we want to add another bit of pie cut or whether we want to just get a long line and then figure out how long that line needs to be. So it's getting exciting. Oh, that was more of a ball ache. Here's maybe why. Uh, <laughs> Take well then, <laughs> and exhaust and beer don't really mix. <laughs> the, um, the the bit that I <laughs> the extra bit I welded on to get me some space should have been on this side. <laughs> ah, interesting. So the so it's it's wrong. I wonder how it's strong might. Pack welds are. Mr. Grinder. Okay, so, oh Christ, too many beers. Right, we've now got this mounted in place, but what I would like to do is once I get this in focus. Got a section of pipe and I want to try and match this frame. Because this is on a four and a half degree angle, if I was to just go direct, I wouldn't have it would just take me right in at that four and a half degree angle. So I've cut one of these on a four and a half degree. And I can rotate it around slightly to change how far it kicks in or kicks out. So I just need to find out where I'm happy with and then cut that. Okay. All right. Oh my God. The wild man of the north. Um. So this looks pretty good. The angle it follows is nice. Uh, it's tacked in place, pretty firm now. I think what I'm going to do is get more of the pie cut sections um, so I'm in split minds as to whether to alter the centerline radius for the bottom meaning that it's a more shallow less aggressive curve but I don't know whether I want to do that yet or not so I'm going to weld together some more of the pies that I've already pre-cut uh, tack them all together hold it up to that part of the exhaust, see how it looks, if I think it's not good enough, if I think it doesn't look right then that's when I'll maybe adjust the centre line radius, that's okay then because I can use the next segment to 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 start the middle bit of the, the exhaust. So I'm going to weld those together now, see what it looks like and then we'll, we'll, we'll line it up to the bike. Okay I'm going to take this opportunity to call this video at part one, I've um, got plenty of stuff to cover for the second part, but I, hopefully this this has given you a a good insight as to what you need to do to set yourself up to start making a pie cut exhaust. So, if you like the video, then or have any comments, then please just add them below. Um, please like and subscribe if you like what you saw. It helps a lot for helping the channel grow, and I can keep making these videos. But. Until the next time, take it easy.